so here we are again. Um, so we got a really good upcoming series with Purple against Firebed. That is personally for me one of the most exciting matches of the day. What do you say, Sexo? Yeah, I think that both of those players are quite good at hitting face. So <laughs> maybe a close one. I, I, I think like um, they are both players of such a, um, a huge skill level that this series has to be amazing. So we got um, Purple with his mage, which we saw before, a druid and a priest. His warlock got banned by Firebat, and Firebat has a rogue, druid, mage, and warrior, and the druid got banned by, by Purple. So we got the tempo mage against a druid here, right? Yeah, it's usually the matchup you want as tempo mage. Wait, actually, you don't know which mage Firebat plays. Looks like freeze mage. Oh, so it's Firebat's freeze mage against Purple's midrange druid? Yeah, well, it might be ramp druid. Might be wrapped through it, right? We do see the engine of war. Yeah, interesting. We don't see a combo piece, we will see if he plays that. Most likely there's some kind of combo to it, but who knows? So let's see. Um we got purple on the coin. No okay, we had he has the um um inner weight as the ramp card. Uh, but doesn't go for a turn one shredder to keep the curve up. I it's quite reasonable. I mean, Firebat has double scientist star, and it's really good against Druid. Yeah, but Innovate Shredder is also really good. <laughs> Goes for the Shredder. No, you can still silence next turn. I mean, in this matchup, you just keep the silence for the Doomsayer, right? It kind of depends, because Matt's silence is also really damn good. Like, just killing a secret, basically. Mm -hmm. It's quite good, but usually, yeah, if you don't have another answer, or you have one keeper, you save it for Doomsayer most of the time. So it's kind of a difficult play here, right? I mean, you don't really want to coin the keeper because you're falling to a Doomsayer later on then, and the Doomsayer Frost now is... Isn't that what you're afraid of as a Druid? Yeah, it seems like you want to save the coin here as well. Because... Oh. Oh. He goes for a proactive keeper here. Silence or two damage? Two damage. Two damage. Yeah, he's just going for the board control here. Um, that gives Firebat only the opportunity of pinging here, right? Yep, so ping might be Doomsayer. We'll see what gets out of it. So ah, the 1-1 one -one hurt. Uh, this see Doomsayer this now, swipe would deal with it. Yeah. But this 1-1, one -one especially, this is, it hurts a lot because like repetitive damage over the upcoming turns as well, right? It's kind of unfortunate getting the parrot here, but he, at least he's cute, right? And it's a beast. Yeah. For the Nexus champion into kill command. Yeah, I guess, I guess. And the yeah. unstable portal, uh, Nefarian and unstable portal yeah. into a hound master. So, do you charge this this kitty cat or do you go into bear form? Oh, you charge every time. Yeah? Charge? Yeah. Okay, so kitty cat power. Um. Especially since if your opponent tries to set up for um, turn 7 flame strike, you just play your low snap next turn. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, just yeah, get I it like for it. Seems fine. Uh. Where shall I strike? Has a double fireball, doesn't do much now. Gilbert would only heal for one, so... Yeah. <laughs> but you don't want to play Fireball, you want to play Flameswork. You don't know that the opponent can block you with his low slap, so... Yeah, pinks to face because it doesn't make a difference. Low slap might be pretty good now, just to like... Yeah, there's no way you don't play it here, like, let's be real. Yeah. Otherwise, like, you have no other play. You don't want to just pass your turn and let your opponent flame strike. Yeah, but the fire bed with so much stall here, like double ice barrier, the double scientist, so valuable. Yeah, but he doesn't have any way to make Atonidas work right now, so all his hand is pretty dead. I he mean, he will top deck Emperor, like we know that, right? Oh, okay. Um, Do it, Yugi. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the purple is waiting for the rope before playing his nose up. Maybe he's just bluffing. I mean, they have they are like ex team members between each other. There's like a, a lot of lot of pressure. Your opponent just pinked face. You know he has a flame strike. Wow. Aye, aye, aye. 
I'm really surprised by that because even if you for some reason decide to keep low I think you still know your opponent will flame strike after he picked your face last turn. So playing the Anasus doesn't really make sense regardless. Seems weird. 10 5 or no balls. Takes him the board. Maybe he was baiting. Maybe he did want to get flame strike. <laughs> so he can refill his board without. So, what do you think about this? Purple having no balls and playing it as a taunt. Interesting, right? Like but a ten five every time. Like but you, have, you haven't you haven't seen the fireball yet. I don't know, Xixo <laughs> man. You might have done it. I don't. I, I wouldn't be like that confident of making it into ten five here. As we're making it ten five, you secure getting BGH value next turn. <laughs> oh man. So, what do you do on the mage side here? This seems like a super weird turn. Just playing Doomsayer without Frost Nova. It's actually looking at Purple's current hand insanely good because it's only way to do with Doomsayer is Force of Nature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just That's not efficient. But we at least know it's not a Ram Druid. It seems to be like just combo Druid with Ancient of Vortex for the Mirror, I guess, and against the Paladin. Is it against the Paladin? I guess people started cutting Repentance as well. Mm -hmm. So we will probably see here, but Get yeah, I do expect to hear. But you want to say set up for next turn into Nidas for Nova. Nova? Yeah, that's insanely good. But I mean, and you just saw your opponent having like no real answer to mm -hmm. Doomsayer. So if it's Nidas, Frost Nova gets unanswered. He just Frost Novas again next turn. So, but purple just drops the low fab then and then. But then still Frost Nova again. It's true. Yeah. But he has two draws with. Wild Crows next turn. Yeah, this so Antonidas now might just win him the game. Maybe uh, at least two draws. Aha. Uh -huh. So let's see. Aha. Uh -huh. Out of the cards. The beautiful Archmage. <sighs> I don't think that purple likes that, huh? Never lucky. Never lucky. I mean, swipe top deck easy game. Or the keeper, Kappa keeper? Maybe you lose her first and do it next turn. Maybe you want to just keep her? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I guess. Oh, yeah, yeah you have double taunts. So yeah, you keepers are fine the here. Five, seven. So you had one keeper, one swipe left, maybe one force of nature. In 17 cards, you had two draws. Well, wasn't that unlikely to get an answer. So, 18 damage sitting in fire bats hand. If so he plays Pyroblast, he could just embrace this morgue, huh? On the other hand, Alexstrasza would be quite good. <laughs> Alexstrasza would be really good here. So, he needs to turn into a first boat regardless. Mm. So we will probably see Thalnos come down this turn. So you mean like um, Thalnos double fireball or faith? More like Thalnos first nova ping? I don't know. It's interesting, right? I think mm -hmm. this turn is quite hard. What, what line are you taking? How are you going to win the game? I mean, Alex Straza is the is a lovely card here, but what do you do without her? What's um. quite interesting is that even though the game doesn't look as good as the matchup usually mm. does. Um, Purple definitely won the mind game and picking because usually. Purple knows that he has to save his druid for warrior, uh, for priest mage, yeah. since the other decks are not good against it being priest and his tempo mage. Uh, yeah. So, but on the other hand, if your opponent thinks that you have to save druid, he might just go for priest mage first because he just doesn't expect your uh, him to risk his druid. That's true. Yeah. So he took a really big risk by starting with his druid, but it paid off. I mean, it might be really important for the. Uh, for the res um, outcome of the series. Um. The spectator bug will disappear once two will plays the next card. Oh, yeah. A weird fix they had, but they fixed it. I'm right, getting out this one. So both Frost Novas are gone, so there's I no mean more this low fab is really powerful. He almost gives the Freeze Mage no out there. And I like it. He's just still keeping... Um, Ancient of Lore in case Alexstrasza happens, because it would quite 
would be quite bad for a druid, but yeah, he's just keeping the lore for a heal. Um, doesn't want to lose the match against the uh, Alex. And Fireball, uh, Firebat has a lot of fireballs. Kappa. I think a pink face, yeah. Um, but does he have the time to play them? I mean, a Savage Raw top deck would be quite fortunate here. Well, that's not a Savage Raw, but it's also pretty good. Yeah. So Fireball has 28 damage in total in the hand. <laughs> it's usually you don't want to fill your board against Freeze Mage, because then a Frost Nova would just make you not be able to play anything. But Purple saw both Frost Novas, mm -hmm. so he knows the only Freeze for a full board would be Blizzard, which deals with some minions, so he would get space again. I don't see Purple trading into this at Nihilus. I think it just... It does make sense. You have a 5 nine, and 9 taunt and... It would be only bad not trading if there would be a second flame strike, but this is pretty uncommon in Freeze Mage nowadays, since Patron is gone. Like, kind of gone, right? I think so. Uh, <laughs> about <laughs> that. Uh, so, it seems like Acolyte and Blizzard will be the play. Yeah, nice. And you also set up for a really good... Oh. Do you do your Icelands here? Our out. Um, that's quite unfortunate, huh? I don't think so because Nidas didn't really matter at this point anymore. It never really kills the five seven. So Get, gets the savage on the hand now. Yeah, he will save his lore for heal. I mean, he what can't play Spectre Hunter because of his Doctor Boom? What purple is he doing here? And I really like it. He's like um, saving armor with the hero power to. Um, have more life for an uh, upcoming Alex. Yeah, but on the other hand, he didn't really have any options. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, yeah, but still. Okay, so Cone of Code and Emperor. Hope your opponent doesn't have enough damage, which he now does with a Savage Wall. He kind of played around Cone here, huh? What to do? Yeah, he played his keeper in between somewhere. He has. So and the he played get the cone here. Is it better, Wo? Don't you want to cone the no, boom? No, you take two more damage. That's weird. Unless he wants to force bolt. Uh, fire. Uh, maybe he wants to fireball the boom, right? Oh no, he can't then. Okay, what is the? Oh, that's that's weird. Well, I mean, if he wants Iceland, it's the same way regardless. But yeah, I guess just two. Sure, the opponent has four damage, so he wants to. I mean, what Fire Firebat is doing here, he's just digging for the Alex Straza and win the game, right? But does he win the game? Let's see. I mean, he has a, an iron ice block to stall. Yeah, but he plays an Alex Straza, gets the opponent to 18 HP. Or oh, 19 is with the hero power now. So it's 19 HP. His opponent goes down up to 25 with heal and hero power. Mm -hmm. We actually see that tonight, Alex Straza. So it's 25 HP. You deal 12. So you, you can next turn. damage. You can no, you can do it, right? You just but you have to play ice block. You have to play ice block. So we only yeah, have seven yeah. mana left. So you can fireball, frostbolt, ice lands. So That's um, 13 huh? damage. Yeah. So you have 12. So hero powers. That's exactly so. Yeah. It's insane. This topic is insane. So if we didn't mess it up, that's exactly so for fireball into turns if. We don't see Purple getting an answer. Mm. I mean, Purple, the only answer is the second lore. Or the second close up. So, Firebat plays fairly easy now. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, but he won't die. To, he won't die to fatigue. And even more damage from purple side here. You have to end the game next turn. And yeah, uh, this is. You more could damage. even just play the emperor and just smog everything <laughs> next the turn after, right? No. You could wait. You I guess you could. Yeah. 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 Right. You could do it. Right. It's interesting. Actually, uh, but no, no, no. You can't. You can't. You can't. Because, because you can't that play. You miss one ping. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Yeah. There's no reason to miss one ping. Um, so the and druid is done. Game. That's it. This Alex Draza top deck was quite good. Since Fireball Ritual's last card, 
Purple knows Firebat's hand at this point, so he knows there are two Fireballs. So. But anyway, for. Yeah, I guess there were options for Purple to play differently, especially on turn 6 when you choose to play the Nasus as Byron. I guess, yeah, just. The flame strike. He's just. Yeah, and he even, he even comes to Pyroblast. Yeah, he just went maybe for the line which was too defensive for this game. And you know, you don't want to give the Freeze Mage too much time. He just gave his board up to the Flame Strike. Yeah, I mean, and he also committed the last Aspire and Yeah. I mean, I like Firebat's line, right? What he did, he was like stalling as long as you can and going for the Alex yeah, He got rewarded. Like. He got Alex at the very last chance. He yeah. pulled the Ostkaka. Oh, that was nice. I like it. Yeah. I like good. it. Oskaka did it as well. Really good match. So. Uh, we got Firebat with the mage again now. Yeah, but like, there's no real count of the first mage left. He so has yeah, that's true. That game is actually... might decide a series, right? Yeah, Tempo Mage has a shorter dealing with the first mage. It's not as bad as you might think, but... First, first is just as bad against first mage as you think. It is really bad. So... So you might just go with the Tempo Mage here because the matchup is uh, quite a little bit better. Yeah. And you see no player starting with a mad scientist. What do you think about that? Misplay? Mm. Like Yeah, M mad scientist is like D card, right? Like especially I think it it's a bit more important for the freeze mage here because the scientist can be kind of bad because of the mirror entity into Doomsayer. Yeah. But <sighs> um, the start from a tempo mage on the other side is really nice here. Yeah. Uh, Firebat not having a first boat last turn, making him take three damage and spend two turns just to deal with. The, the thing is, like the double flame waker opener here is insane, and Firebat doesn't have an answer for it. I mean, just play second flame waker, and the, the freeze mage is dying faster when you can blink. Yeah, next turn you also play intellect, so yeah. you probably get another. Two mana spell to play, maybe at least. That is really good for purple right there. It's Firebat would have played a Fireball, he just deal with one of them, yeah. I think, if he had it. But he just doesn't have anything. Just go. Do you go for the counter spell to play around Frost Nova Doomsayer? I, I think you don't need to. You have a Fireball in the hand, right? You just go for the cycle. And so uh, you kind of give away its counter spell because you wouldn't play yeah. your entity into, a, um, into the po potential Doomsayer. Yeah. And by giving away that you play counter spell. You just let Firebat use coin and deal exactly, with it. Exactly, exactly. I think, yeah, that's, that's totally fine. Uh, reasonable. I think we see the, yeah, uh, there's like no way you don't use it for six mana here. What? That's surprising me. Actually, <laughs> oh yeah, no, because there's a Doomsayer Force Nova, he has Fireball anyway. That's weird that he didn't. I don't understand. Can you explain why he didn't play the Arcane Blast for six damage and buff his mana worm? Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of. He wants to save it like for a Doomsayer, but you have Fireball for Doomsayer. Yeah, but, but maybe while he is, uh, what is it in the end? Um, so, uh, it's the same damage in the uh, end, right? If you get a Fireball on the hand or not, and you might not damage your own minion. No, because it's like he doesn't have like it's more mana efficient. He can use Fireball Ping or whatever next turn if you use the Cane Blast. Just like a Cane Blast does six damage and the one Baffon Mana Worm. Now mm -hmm. you could just Fireball that and do a lot of damage to face. Well, I guess it turned out quite well. Maybe I was mistaken there. It did work really well for him. See. Yeah, it's was fine with having the use the coin. Yeah, the exactly. counter gets a lot better. Uh, let's see. He's like really hoping for that to be a no entity. No, but he's getting wrecked here. I mean. Yeah, he doesn't have mana for like a cane intellect and kind of code anymore, so he has to play minions this turn. So this match is really on the edge. This 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 counter spell is also huge. So what is the play? The fireball on the doomsayer it is, right? I think you play fireball and then you play entity hope for no second doomsayer just because it's so much damage. Yeah, I like that a lot. It seems like really nice. You might want to attack with your Flame Waker into a Doomsayer. Is there any chance to kill him this turn? You have 7 damage right now. Mm -hmm. Fireball, it's potentially 11 damage. 
That's 21 damage, then four more from your entity. Nah. Why didn't he just kill him? You gotta believe. And mirror entity or not? I mean, you get kind of a board clear here, and you still have counter spell up. I think it's quite good here for purple. I don't know. I would have just killed him there. Just believe in your flame makers. <sighs> so the question now is, what do we throw away for the counter spell? Well, the intellect, intellect or ice spell. One of those so you can play blizzard. So you play blizzard or do you into play cone of cold. It does the same, right? Actually, yeah, you want to save the coal cone probably for later. Because it's a cheaper freeze, right? It's cheaper, as it only does one damage later on. And right now, the damage doesn't make a difference. So, ah, uh, that's a close call. Okay, that's where I will see play. Oh, hmm. Shredder or Drake? I thought Shredder because it's a flame strike. Like, you have to expect some sort of clear. Man, probably not doing a good job making his opponent not for flame strike. Like, here. Has been issues dealing with flame strike. Yeah, I guess Shredder is just better here overall. Because you just want to keep the board sticky. I mean, I mean, it does cycle into a potential second fireball. Mm. Actually, yeah, did get it. So now we will see Dr. Boom come down, set up for fireball yeah. kill next turn. You might as well just play the scientist as well here, right? Unless you want to ping. Because mm -hmm. if there's another freeze, then the ping might actually make a difference. Yeah, but if you bo bomb a hit for one. Yeah, you can also... I guess it's like a Frost Nova, you have the potential yep. to ping your own boom bot, yep. hit for four, and then fireball. It's, it's better in this situation, for sure. Yeah, I think we'll play both minions before he plays Cone of Cold. And we just, yeah, you just played Ecolite Doomsayer and Van Cone, and, but if one boom bot hits the face, that's it, right? Mm, depends how much it hits for. Yeah, at oh. least for free. Yeah, for, for uh, yeah, free free damage. Yeah, has the 50 too. 50. If it one hits face, which is quite likely, the one hits face and one hits a minion. So it's uh yeah. We will see. Let the pain speak to me. That's it. Uh, yep. Game. Wow. The tempo mage beating the freeze mage with, I guess the best draw it could have gotten, right? Yeah. Not wow. Firebat not having a single answer to the early minions. If if Purple would have lost this game, the series would have been pretty much over because the Freeze winning against the... Freeze, against the yeah. yeah. I mean, the Which Freeze... Is yes, really like weird. Like, Freeze Mage won against Combo Druid, then lost against Tempo Mage. Yeah, it's like insane. So I guess um, he's back. I mean, Tempo Mage can win this matchup just by getting the right curve. Like, a Tempo Mage with double Flame Waker and a Thorcourse Apprentice in the beginning is, like, super hard to beat. Yeah, I think that people overestimate the matchup of Rogue against Tempo Mage. I think it's a pretty bad matchup, so, yeah, I expect the Vorian to come yeah. down here. Um, so, going to Vorya, I, I don't know. I don't think the Vorya is also too favored against Tempo Mage because Tempo Mage just has... The early aggression. Yeah, but I think it's better than Rogue against Tempo Mage. It depends a lot of um, if the mage is running mirror or image. Okay, uh, we'll display. He's just gonna play until the portal next turn. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it goes. I wouldn't be too surprised to see a slam here, but it is not good regardless. Like slam or hero power, you don't feel good about either of them. Warrior without a Vorex. Um. Yeah, yeah, actually, you saw there's no Vorex because Vorex would have come down last turn. Yeah, exactly. So. You just bash the apprentice here. You don't want to give the mage the secret. I think you play unstable portal over intellect here. Um, just for a, a minion tempo. Yeah, I like it a lot. That's like. What is he getting? A four drop? Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, that's really good. It's like about as good as it gets. It feels, uh, uh, fits I the mean, curve. Savage combatment would have been like better. <laughs> because Savage Combatment, it's also a beast, also a 5 4, and yeah. makes well, you face. I, 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 I don't think he can't really complain here. Oh, uh, he can always complain. I mean, Fiber is running Revenge, and I think this card might be huge in this matchup, and also not everybody plays around it. Even like, the way to play into it is by going face and getting your opponent to 12 HP, and from that point, even if you Revenge clears some stuff, Fireballs can still just finish the Warrior. 
I mean, what is important in this matchup is an early Justicar, but the, the problem is um, the Tempo Mage is kind of over rolling the Warrior here with this. Oh, oh, oh. okay, that was quite important. And with this kind of already pressure. Yeah, he couldn't have played the Mad Scientist if that missile didn't hit. Um, what's GG! The play here just yeah you yeah. have to bring down a justy car on curve but that's just a um, two one with sinus and the hero power yeah but I, c I think you can argue like that like the, if the warrior gets low enough the revenge value is like insanely good getting double frostbolt yeah Which quite surprised we didn't see frostbolt here over the trade because that way you have maybe just wants a secret actually th yeah that makes sense just get a secret this turn it is a counter spell so but Firebird doesn't know it and really doesn't want to play any minion into it. Gives him the Acolyte though here. Is it good? I mean, he wants to get into revenge range, so I guess that's fine, but there's still a counter spell up and... Um, yeah, it's giving a mage. An Acolyte never feels good because if they have like nothing to play, they can always just ping it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, he's he's setting up the revenge, but he knows he can't play it, right? Because of this um, counter spell. Wait, 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 wait. Do you go for Lisa here? You have five damage on board. Yeah. You can play Flame Waker and Double Frostbolt. So if all four missiles hit face, that's 15 damage. Huh. <laughs> what so is many missed Lisa today. It's a, it's a what is it? A one in 27. It's what the, how do you? What? 27 next. No, no, no it's, 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 it's 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and 1 and 2. It's 1 and 16. 1 and 16, right. Yeah, yeah. Um. So, he missed like a 7% lethal or whatever. Like, yeah. stuff like that adds up. I wouldn't blame him for that, though. Um, if there would be like at least something to proc this counter spell, but this counter spell is absolutely doing a job there. Yeah, just imagine if I was playing a card like Unstable Ghoul or Explosive Sheep to trigger the Merge the <laughs> Oh wait, there's only <laughs> counter spell at this point left. But playing the Sylvanas seems okay. Um, but he goes to 18 HP, so he has 9 damage on board, so he only needs to do 7 damage, which double frostbolt and hero power does do. You this, this tempo mage like really is doing the job. That's, that's a fireball. You just use the top deck here to tilt the opponent a little bit. Mm. Just using everything. So. Yep, it's like I said, I think like the, the tempo mage um, against the warrior, I have some kind of negative experience like as a warrior player. Yeah, like up. I think statistically it's like quite a huge edge for the mage, mm -hmm. but mage also does quite well against um, oil work. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the flame cannon value you get is like on a drake, for example, or just the temper from the apprentice. And the especially the scientist is a problem, right? Yeah, it's like, do you just have a mad scientist? <laughs> no, it's like super hard to deal with. Um, so but let's see. Coin and Van Cleave are yeah. one way to deal so with it. So for Firebat, we have the rogue left, and purple has the priest and the mage left. So I guess this is. If um, purple win uh, if Firebat wins this with the rogue, he has rogue versus priest. Um, we didn't see purple's priest last match, so we don't know what kind of priest yeah, it is. Different true. priests have differently like uh, all are bad against rogue, but yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. Yeah, but exactly. Some of them are, uh, have a lot better of a chance to yeah, yeah. do the and because the control priest has just but been. coin fab if it's Frank Leaf. oh no balls. Uh, Actually, I like this because this way you set up for a top deck um, Deadly Poison next okay, turn. Okay, here's the thing. He has a, he has a huge Van Cleave. But he has to do his entity first. Yeah, that's true. So what do you do? Nah, he, he would... He, I mean, he knows that this can't be... Counter spell, yeah. Yeah. Man, he could have played an 8-8 eight, eight last turn. I mean, fi uh, I mean, like... Purple will just never play the counter spell here. Like he, he usually doesn't do this kind of mistakes. I mean, don't mistake. It would be a bluff, but yeah, it would be quite weird. Yeah. But even if Firebat went for the eight eight and cleave, probably had, like the perfect answer by playing Apprentice, Frostbolt on turn three and Fireball on turn four. So 
I mean, the apprentice is really good against Thermal Mage, but Fireball just solves the problem. Fire um, and Purple is running Water Elementals. That's really good against Rogue. Um, yeah. Maybe we just see a real dagger here. Oh, tempo friendly. Isn't it like he knows that he runs double little mirror entity? Isn't it like just better to save it for the second one? I mean, the second one will most likely not be torn this game. You saw that he had no mad scientist on turn two to play. Okay, but what I think is really important here playing the low fab over the Azure Drake, just you don't want the tempo mage to um, snowball out of the control, and, and low fab is really good for that on turn five. <laughs> like, disagrees. He knows yeah. he has, like, potential bait flurry coming up. He's getting wrecked by Flame can, can now, though, right? Um, uh, <laughs> I guess if he really wants to trade his water limit into 1 1. Yeah, it's still it's good. You have two mana to remove a five drop. It's, uh, I mean, it's not really two mana because it forces you to deal inefficiently with uh, tokens. But does he really play like a double apprentice here? Yeah, just do it. Um. But now we will see probably dagger, deadly poison, attack into water elemental at a fate flurry. Oh, we might just see double deadly poison. Like we dagger, double deadly poison, attack face. Yeah, flurry. I mean, why not use the second? But you, you can argue like this. You maybe want to keep um, one poison for an SI combo because we haven't seen one yet, and it can but quite just make a difference. It does make a difference also because it can activate Tinker's Oil, but then you would have to face like water elemental, freeze your own face, mm -hmm. and the uh, not less damage. He does go for it, but I don't know. I think this matchup is like. Health total is really important, and he takes three more damage, he does get frozen, and he deals um, seven less damage, and if you just, just went all phase, I think. I mean, if you take it like that, I think it's fine, because he just low the pure powers next turn anyway, so it should make quite a difference, right? I mean, it is still like a ten damage swing. You take three more, your opponent takes seven less. So and, like, ten damage swing for a deadly poison? Do you like not eviscerating the Shredder Bear? I mean, this this is just a clean trade for the Shredder now, and it's kind of annoying for you, right? Yeah, maybe you're correct on that, but... Yeah, Sand is really awkward afterwards. But we see a Frostbolt, which... I like this a lot, he would just he uh, values his board a lot, and... Yeah, but next turn, you have to... I guess you Frostbolt again, right? That was really good here, just sad. Is it? Like, if you compare it to, like, what it could have been, like, a more card draw or another minion? I, it could have been worse, right? I think Sab is fine. Just like considering his opponent only has one card on hand, giving him, I mean, just play it again, I think that would be, like, a lot better draws to get. Goes for Tinkers here. So we will see Frostbolt Shredder, unless, oh, I guess Drake. But he, you have to Frostbolt this A2. Like, you're, you uh, know, no, you, you don't take this A damage, there's no way. Yeah. He plays Shredder over Drake because he knows the opponent has a 4 damage dagger, so makes sense. Um, Healbot doesn't do quite much. You might be forced to cycle the fan here. I mean, the pickup, uh, the Azure Drake pickup for a Temple Mage is huge because it just allows you to cycle you to your big threat, like Dr. Boom, for example. So, Firebat is the considering if he wants to attack before playing Fan of Knives. Mm -hmm. And he does choose to do so. <sighs> Whoa! That's insane! This Nat Pale is quite... Oh my god! Ha! <laughs> Caught one. That might just win him the game! Might indeed. That Nat Pale is insane. This extra card draw in this stage of the game is super unfortunate. Oh, and that's a pretty good pickup as well. Firebat doesn't seem too happy about that one. But he seems happy about that one. Yeah. He has no eviscerates left, though. And he can't deal... He either has to deal with the Pagel or the Drake. He deal with the Drake. Yeah. Pagel to last turn and only draws 50% of the time. The so question, it will, this time. will Pagel fish again? Nah, I never fish this twice in a row. Oh, that's it's, a, it's, a golden, it's a golden Pagel, I forgot. Getting Dr. Boom and Antonidas from the top. Well, that's what I call fortunate. Okay, so we will see Mana Women and Stable Portal, but do you play Antonidas first or Dr. Boom after? I guess he goes for Dr. I Boom. I mean, Boom is just, in terms of power, better against Rogue. <laughs> this guy, this, Dr. Boom is just the Rogue Slayer. But 
if I had has BGH tagged in his deck, he saw that coming, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I think you don't like if you have a good game understanding, you do realize that people like to play Doctor Boom. So yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we can also might see the Drake backstab to kill Mana Worm here, mm -hmm. but then he would start by doing that because it cycles. So yeah, I think we will do that first. Backstab the Mana Worm, BGH, Doctor Boom. Traitors SI into a Pagel. And then he has the option if he wants a hero power, a boom bot or not. Yeah. Um. I think since he's dice to double fire fireball regardless. Oh. Why doesn't actually it the boom bot kill a drake? Like actually it always kills it, right? No, it always kills the big game at the first <sighs> usually. That's weird. There we go. Finally. Kay, Dude, this net Pagel is insane. <laughs> uh, picks up. Entity and science. But we saw Purple already use the fireball before on the uh, Violet Teacher. Yeah. And he used both Frost Bowls. So I'm really surprised Firebat didn't kill Nat Pagel. It's like he chose to trade his eye into a boom board over Pagel. Um. I think he just hmm. killed the Pagel in that position. So let's see. The problem is you can. Um can play Archmage with the Entity, but you don't set up for lethal, and then the rogue might just overrun you with like the Assassin's Blade, Tinker's o Oil into Poison. Hmm. What is the better? This is a really hard turn. Hmm? I think Antonidas Entity is probably going to be the play. I mean, he has to deal with the Antonidas, but if the Oil lands on the BGH, that's a weird play. Oh, he he goes for the board control. He game. a Fireball, a big game hunter. It's Quite a different line. Yeah, now he needs to draw another spell, which he has some, but he used both force bolts, he used at least one flame cannon. Like unless he picks up the cane missiles, the Antoniders might just not get value this game. Mm. I mean he we didn't see any missiles yet. I think he Yeah, but you have no card for so getting it isn't that likely. I guess he also values the cycle from the scientist quite high. Um, so he goes with the assassins, but but can set up for a two-turn kill here. Well, yeah, next turn you just play it flurry. All to the dome. This has to hit face to set up for leaf, right? You always hit face, yeah, yeah. You saw both fireballs, you saw both frost bolts. That's a hard decision, I think. I don't think there's any decision to make this. <laughs> this Plagal, did he just fish every turn? Yep, but it wasn't enough. Um. How can you win? You can't, right? You can't. You Over. have no way to kill your own Treader or anything. Mm. The Temple Mage falls to the Rogue. That was really important for Firebird to win that. Yeah, it was <sighs> kind of weird how... Purple Fireball, the big game went for a quite defensive play, but both players playing the matchup really defensively, kind of surprising to me at least. So now we see Woke against Priest, which usually... Depends what kind of Priest it is, I guess. Um. I think that Purple prefers to play Dragon Priest as well. Let's uh. see, we got... Um, I guess it's a Dragon yep. Priest. Yeah, we see a Twilight Guardian, so it has to be a Dragon Priest. Mm. So this matchup is... Bit more favored for the priest, but still the rogue and the flurry uh, they are just clearing the board so efficient. Oh, that's a pretty good hand for Firebat. <laughs> like if I could choose my hand against priest, it would probably look like Firebat's hand is looking right now. <laughs> <laughs> like backstep SI four drop five drop. Yeah, <laughs> seems pretty good. Even the early blood mage gives him a bit more board presence. No, you just give a power. Oh. I mean, you want to get it out of your hand because of Cabal Shadow Breeze. That's so. like really surprising to me because now he won't be able to proc his SI agent next turn. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I am convinced that the play was to hero power. Next turn, he won't place any minion. Mm -hmm. Any priest, two or three drop dies to a um, backstab SI. That way, you kill his three drop really efficiently or his two drop. And have Ness eyes left as a 3-3 that challenges a 2-3 zombie chow. 
Yeah, Kree, like, um, it seems really hard here to proc this MSI effect somehow if he doesn't pick up the second backstab. He doesn't do it. That is... That might be quite a big mistake, um, because the SI effect is quite valuable in this matchup. And now we will see a second... Um I mean, Valence chosen coming into the priest. No, yeah. I think the second Dark Cultist, because if there's one Dark Cultist, you always kill the rest of the board first and then kill it so it doesn't get an effect. But against two of them, you have to proc one first. That's, a uh, that's so hard, you can't even remove the board now, no, right? I think just play a teacher and trade into the 3 1. Yeah. But he gets the cultist value, that's a big deal. Picking up the blade flurry. Oh man, look at that Valence chosen. And there's no sap in the rogue hand. That might be. It's quite a pity. Even if he plays like low sap, trades really poorly to that as well. Wow, <laughs> you have actually no way to remove this five, uh, eight monsters. <coughs> what can you do? You're waiting for a sap. I don't know. Like, you have to have a really good blade flurry. Which you have this one. You can think as oil attack flurry clear the board. And the dragon priest just oh, that might be. It's quite good, but yeah, we will see what clear here. So you play Tinker's Oil, Flurry. Yeah, I don't see an alternative. You have to, like, you're taking way too much damage. I mean, you can take 9 more damage against Priest. It's Priest doesn't really have burst besides Holy Nova and Black Corruptor for 2 or 3 damage each. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, like, you also deny him the cultist value. Yeah, I like his lot. Um. I quite have to say I like this priest hand. It deals with most of the rogue threats and the corruptor is one of the better cards to have. Um, so. the cleric doesn't quite do something. You might just go with the you may you have to keep the Twilight um, Guardian in the hand for the corruptor. Well you could have played it and kept the wait no. No, this That's is not, not a dragon, dragon yeah, right, so. it's an it, it doesn't seem like a dragon, right? I mean, come on. I don't look at card art. <laughs> Sprint is a huge pickup for the rogue. Like, would you say it's a huge draw? It's a huge draw. Is it a? Is it? A, it's by far the best draw, I would say, because um, when I lose this rogue, this matchup, I didn't draw Sprint normally, but he gets both of them and the sap. This is, tr I think this. This is getting a really hard match for the priest. If rogue draw, um, gets the card draw and the early game. Priest has a hard life. So what do you do? As Rogue you have a really good position, but you still have a lot of options this turn. Mm -hmm. Double prep. <laughs> wow. You can do like... Like he's probably going to prep a sap, play as I, maybe backstab and low sap. Like those cards I expect to come down. Maybe... I mean, the Assassin's Blade over... The Assassin's Blade is really good here because you can't just um, stomping down your life toll and you have to heal borders back up. I like this a lot. Um, sets up the Assassin's yeah. Blade, it's steps good. Twilight Guardian, and kills the grill. Cleric. And still has the second prep for his yeah. second sprint. Yeah, this is so good. I mean, I, you can't ask more for, uh, as a rogue. You get a backstab as I in the starting hand, and then you draw into both of your sprints in the mid game. Wow. Yeah, that's it's insane. a. His next turn will be prep, sprint, low sap. That's pretty nuts. I wield the power of the black wind. Is someone injured? But that is ever. There is a really good pickup, especially after the uh, first step was already played. But um, let's see if we see the second plate flurry. The rogue. See one, How many cards does the rogue have left? I mean, he cycled through the most cards of his deck. Yeah, he has nine cards left. Priest is never going to fatigue this yeah, game. Yeah, this is just this game doesn't seem winnable as the priest player. But I mean, he is still at 30 HP. <laughs> <laughs> he will true. be able to play his ever now on a basically empty board. We have so a 21 damage weapon, though. Yeah, but that's all. There's no more damage in five percent. The double Holy Nova will help a lot. Do you play the Twilight Guardian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to play it, right? Yeah. It um, the best card. What can the rogue get there? The Twilight Guardian will soak up a lot of damage, and it's not. I have no wow. time for games. Man, I'm really surprised we didn't see this ever come down. 
I mean, what he does with this Sylvanas? Yeah, he forces out a blade flurry, right? Yeah, but exactly. That's really like something Firebat isn't happy to do. And now drop the teacher. Yeah, this double holy nova will do a lot for Firebat, and I don't like dropping the low fab now because you usually want to drop it um, when you already have a board to protect it. I mean, five damage is pretty huge when your opponent has 11 HP. But on the other hand, Shadow of Death is a card. Yeah, eight mana death, hero power is an option. Mm -hmm. Um, picking up a two mana. Oh wow, this is really this is insane. This um, this taunt wall, and I think the rogue used the most part of his damage. And where we get a problem as a rogue player because yeah, he might just <laughs> get fatigued. Yeah, and dealing with his zero is just not an option. You yeah, normally win see. by bursting them down. Teacher, Van Cleef, hero power, and kill the three six. The four four Van Cleef usually is quite good, mm -hmm. but not against double holy nova. You trade your 2 4 into Violet Teacher and just double Holy Nova. Yeah, double Holy Nova keeping it is so important. Wow. That's just. And now, next time you can play Twilight Web and your server. This is huge. Yeah, and you get even the 4 life on top of that. And you have a 2 4 taunt. That's really good. Both uh, Bayfairies are gone. The Assassin's Blade is gone, so the Tinker's Oil is not going to be that good anymore. So he buffs up the BGH, makes sense, he wants to... This is like his last... No. W what does he keep it for, well, like, for against the death? Did he... He missed the death. Oh, he was playing around this. I mean, you know there was no da death when he played the low fab, right? So he might as well... Eh, double Taunt might have been better than this. He played the Twilight Guardian and the 2-4 Taunt. So he doesn't really know there's no death. I can't. I, I Maybe he wants to play it safe and hero power, but yeah, I guess since your plan is fatigued, you can consider playing the Azor Drake here. I guess, yes. Um, I'm so really unsure which one is giving him better odds to win this I game. I mean, I think he's just setting Firebite on a sap there. Why not? Is it not better to buff up the Twilight Whelp there because the flurries are gone? Yeah. No, because Big Game might have to your Drake otherwise. Step of world. Oh. No, big game when I get Yeah, yeah. you're right, you're right, yeah. yeah. I miss misstep there. Um. So, getting the sap. So, problem making the, ri um, the right call there, not playing the Ysera. I like that a lot. Um, and the rogue is just running out of really yeah, good options. I, like, most prints are gone. I don't see what he can draw to. Like, he needs to draw. Oh, yeah. I guess this game is won by fire, but he just needs to pick up his Deathwing next turn. Mm. Like, we see he's ever this turn, so Deathwing will just clear the board. He will have, uh, probably will have a basically empty hand. They have a 12 to 12. Uh huh. Okay. Seems reasonable. <laughs> um, yeah. This rogue feels bad, man. Never winning games again. <laughs> Since 2014. <laughs> I think a lot of us <laughs> came down to Firebat playing turn 2. Um, Thanos backstab instead of just hero power. Yeah, yeah, that was huge, right? Hmm. So, let's. Whew. The rogue. So, Firebat can't really use Eviscerate because he can't combo it. His opponent. Set nine damage and he just concedes. So that's game. It. Priest three winning win. over Rogue. And Purple advancing to the next group, which is on Thursday. No, yeah. I mean on Saturday. I mean, we see some. Yeah, it was a really good series. I liked it a lot. Yeah, it was good, but Firebat still has one more chance. He plays against the winner of Cypher against Martin Creek. Yeah, I guess. So, uh. still in a good position. Yeah. But Purple making it through. Yeah, I hope you like this. Uh, I like this. Um, these matches a lot. I hope you enjoy this as well. We are going into a quick break now, um, seeing the losers match then. Yeah. Um, so see you soon. See you.